Hey everyone, it's Sarah. I am actually checking in from the ice den today where the Coyotes held an optional practice before they depart for LA where they'll play the Kings Thursday night at Staples Center. Uh, Captain Shane Jones did not participate in the practice, um, but he is going to be on the trip and it is actually possible that he plays tomorrow, Dave Tippett said. So he was getting treatment today. Last night after the game, Tippett said that Doan had visited with a doctor yesterday and the prognosis was good. So they're not fearing this to be a long-term injury and all they're calling it right now is a lower body injury. So let's get to our first question. Um, we actually have a couple questions dedicated to Roomblad, so I'll kind of package both of these questions together. The first one's from Drew and he asked, Roomblad is wasting away, at what point do they trade him? And then D-Dogs, Asked, when does Roomblad get traded? Seems like he is the odd man out. Um, you know, right now, I, I think that the Coyotes haven't really maybe made a decision yet on what they plan to do with Roomblad. Um, he hasn't been able to crack the lineup since those first few games, but I still think they see him as a valuable player. And talking to general manager Don Maloney, even as recent as a few weeks ago, uh, he said he, he believes Roomblad to be, you know, a potential power play quarterback. He said some, he's someone whose skill set he thinks rivals that of Mike Ribeiro. So I don't think this is a player that they're going to give away easily, but as we've been saying for so long, they are looking for more offensive pieces. They do want to add to their offensive depth, and perhaps he's a piece that they dangle the package. Um in a trade, but I don't think Broomblad as himself would, would get that type of player that they're looking for. So maybe he draws in at some point. Um, it's just a sign of depth, and that's something that they feel that they need, especially with how compact the schedule is and how important their blue line is. Our next question is from Paul Hoffman, and this is more of a comment. He says, can we please trade to get Boys from Florida. Um, obviously, he's talking about Brad Boys, a big kind of heavy right winger, very similar to what Shane Doan is, and, and he's on a one-year contract with Florida. And um, you know, that's maybe a player that that style that they covet. But I think they're looking more for a playmaking guy, someone who um, you know can set up Riddy Morbata and, and really complement that handle line. So I don't know if Boys is on their radar, but uh, you know, that's that's obviously a player that is doing well, and um, you know, the Coyotes are always looking for more offensive options. This next question comes from not Keith Yandel, <laughs> and the question is, I know you have Team Canada figured out, but for Team USA, do you think Keith Yandel will make the team? And, uh, you know, right now I don't think Yandel has, has done too much so far this season to hurt his camp campaign to make team, team USA. Obviously, if you look at last night's game against the Flames with two assists and he set up uh, a very pretty Verbata goal and a very pretty Mike Ribeiro goal, which were very similar plays. Um, you know, what he's done well so far is being a setup man from the point. Um, in both situations, you know, he, he basically froze the defense and froze the goaltender and was able to find the open man um, who, you know, pretty much had an empty net shot for himself. So, I think there's a really good chance that we see Yandel on this Team USA roster. And I think part of the reason is because of the big ice surface uh, that they'll have in Europe playing in Russia. Um, there's just so much more, more space out there, and it really puts a lot more emphasis on your attack and, you know, starting, uh, you know, starting your offense from your defense um, and really playing that 200-foot game. Um, from your blue line, and obviously Yandel offers that, you know, as an offensive-minded defenseman who can move the puck, that would be an attractable asset um, for Team USA when they try to adapt to those bigger ice services that Russia, Sweden, Finland uh, are all used to. Our next question is, comes from uh, Matthias. What do you think Rubel would have to do to get in the lineup? And, and, you know, I think right now it's looking like it's probably it would take an injury or a loss. And obviously the Coyotes don't want both, but right now they just seem to be sticking to the to the blue line and the line combinations and the pairings that have worked for them so far. Um, that's why we haven't been able to see Michael Stone get back in. That third pairing with Rusty Klessel and David Schlemko has been working. Schlemko has been playing pretty well. And so it looks like right now until, you know, something fizzles and, and something goes wrong that they're going to be sticking with this lineup that's been working for them. This question comes from Coyote Swede. I'm a tad surprised that Grice hasn't gotten a couple more starts, especially since Smith seemed to go down awkwardly a couple times the last few games. I'm a big concern that Tip might be overplaying Smith, uh, and I hate to see him get hurt as a result of it. 
After all, Grice has played well when given the chance, and you should get the chance at least in back-to-back -back games. Your thoughts? Um, this is a great point, and, and I think a lot of people maybe expected um, Grice to get a little bit more action by this point, especially when you look back at the back-to-back -back that they had last weekend playing Friday in Anaheim against the Ducks and then coming home to host Detroit. I think a lot of us thought Smith would, would fairly get the Anaheim game since it was a division game, and then Grice would play the second half of that back-to-back -back against an Eastern Conference opponent in Detroit. But, um, you know, Smith said he felt fine after that game. He wasn't tired. He felt like his body was in good shape. It was, a, you know, it was a short plane ride home. So he felt that he was ready to go, and, and he wanted that game, and Tippett wanted to give him that game. Obviously, it was disappointing performance in the shootout when he let in four goals on six shots, and um, he wanted to prove that he was better. And um, neither publicly said this, but it was also his last chance to audition for Mike Babcock, who's going to be the coach of Team Canada at the Olympics. That was the last face time he got, you know, with him him and neither said that factor in the decision to play but it, you know it was there it was the opportunity but I do think we will see Grice a little bit more as we get into heavier of the back-to-backs and just a heavier schedule he proved in that Philadelphia game that he can be a reliable backup and that the team I think has trust and faith in him now to come in it didn't seem like his rough of a transition maybe in the games at times when they had LaBarbera go in last year as their backup. So I think we will see him a little more. And, um, you know, this kind of follows up on another question from Coyote Cup. Um, who says, is there a chance that Tip is overplaying Smith? After all, he did go down awkwardly a couple of times the last few games. And, um, you know, I, I think in both of those instances, Smith was okay. He was able to stay in the game. The one incident on Saturday with his neck, he just kind of turned quickly. And, um, you know, it was just an awkward feeling. And it loosened up as he was able to get back up. And um, last night, he took a very low shot and, and was able to rebound okay. But, you know, they are going to have to monitor his workload. I think that's a fair point because if you look at the last few years, I think that the teams that have been able to – um, you know, manage the workload of their number one, or maybe even go with a, a two goalie tandem like we saw in Vancouver with Roberto Luongo, and Corey Snyder, or what we see at the Ducks with Victor Foss and Jonas Hiller. Those teams, you know, tend to do well and are really fresh down the stretch. So um, I think that's something that they'll consider to monitor. But Smith wants to play, and this is an important half of the first season for him. Um, to make that case for Team Canada, to, to make sure the Coyotes are in a strong position after missing out on the playoffs. So I think we'll continue to see, you know, him play a lot, but I expect those, you know, those days of rest to, you know, to, to come here shortly. This question is from Shannon. With Ribeiro's recent point surge, do you see him remaining on the third line with Moss and Chipshire? Corby. Well, right now he's playing on a line with Dave Moss and Mikhail Bodker. And, you know, maybe on paper it looks like the third line, but, you know, Dave Tippett has said how, um, you know, it really, any line on any given night could be the go-to line. I, you know, I think it's fair to say that whatever line Shane Doan is on is probably the first line. Um, obviously he hasn't played, you know, he didn't play Tuesday, so maybe the order gets mixed up a bit, but I think that's a real strong suit that this team doesn't have a clear-cut number one line, number two line, number three line. Um, it, on paper, maybe it looks like Roberto's on the third line, but if you look at what his line's been able to do, they're getting the minutes, they're getting the opportunity. It's not like they're getting short-shifted and not getting as much playing time as the other two lines, like the Hansel and the Vermel line. Um, they're finding their opportunities, and so I think that right now that line's going to stay together. It was a line that was put together really midway through that Saturday game against Detroit, and it's just as clicked. And obviously there's a little familiarity there with Bodker and Rivero, but I firmly believe the Coyotes really don't fix what isn't broken, and so I, I think that they're going to keep going with that mix right now. This question is from Westside Evil. Uh, what's I devil? Excuse me. How do you think realignment will affect the Coyotes if they don't win the division? Um, I think that this could actually maybe help them because you look at how tight the Pacific Division is. Um, obviously, the first three teams are going to get an automatic playoff berth, but because you know this is so tight and they're playing so well and they have to you know earn points you know every game it seems, um, you know that might give them a leg up on someone in the other division in the conference. Um, you know, obviously there's two wild cards, so the top three teams from each conference are automatically going to go to the playoffs, but there's two wild cards up for grab that can come from either division. So the Coyotes, you know, realistically could make the playoffs, um, you know, as as a fourth or, or fifth seed in, in the Pacific, if that's how tight and good this division is, it might be more than, you know, the, the fourth and fifth place team in the other division in the conference. So I think it could actually 
actually help them. You know, I think that we're seeing now as we're heading into this division schedule, the regular Titans are the regular Titans. You know, there's the San Jose, there is the Anaheim, there's going to be the LA, the Vancouver, and then you have a couple teams, um, you know, in the rebuilding mode in Calgary and Edmonton. So I think it could actually end up helping the Coyotes um, because of how tight their games are. They're probably going to be getting more points, and, and that could help when they go head to head for a wild card berth if they don't win the division. This is our last question of the of the day. This is from Chris. Clean camera has been awesome. Flash in the pan, or do you think he is coming into his own? I actually think Clean Camera started coming into his own last season when he he won a consistent roster spot with this team. Um, you know, he was a player brought in on a two-way deal who they just figured would add some depth, and um, you know, in training camp that really short can get. Can, Dem's training camp, um, he wowed the coaching staff and, and has really found a niche with this team. Obviously, Tuesday he contributed an empty net goal, but before that, he had you know earned a promotion up the lineup to play with Doan and Vermette, and really. He's just an opportunistic player, plays a very simple game. He goes up and down his wing. He's rugged. He's hard to play against, but he does the little things right. He's a good core checker. He's strong on the cycle. And as much as you know, so much attention gets um, gets directed towards the Riberos and the Rabadas and the Jones. You need players like that. And I think the Coyotes are are living proof of that. How players like that still have a role and a niche on their, their team. Uh, so that wraps up our chat for today. We'll be back next Wednesday um, and information on duties.azcentral.com. And you can follow um, myself on Twitter at azc underscore McCollin and then follow AZ Central Sports at azc sports. That's it for now. Bye.